If you are looking for more peace this month, well, then we should talk more about that. Well, hello friends, I'm Mary Beth with At What Cost, where simple living and deep faith go hand in hand. It's that time of year again when we all want to enjoy Christmas and be in the Christmas spirit, but we find ourselves decorating the tree through gritted teeth. And yes, that was an actual picture of me decorating the tree with my kids just last night, real Hallmark movie style. Not my proudest moments. But these are the moments that I used to long for that Christmas spirit to just come about. I'd be decorating the tree, I get all of the decorations out. You can see I still have some boxes back there of ornaments that did not make it onto the tree because I was just done. In the past, I would get to that point where I still had boxes of decorations hanging around, but I was all Christmas spirited out. And I certainly was not finding the kind of meaning that I truly desired this Christmas season. But that's not the only place that I would look for joy or happiness or satisfaction in my life. I would measure my standard of joy based on how clean my house was or how caught up my laundry was. My motherhood, I would base on how happy my kids were or whether or not they were making me happy. Were they obeying? Were they dressed cute? Did they smile in the pictures? A lot of these things that were very external circumstances and often out of my own control were the things that I look to to find meaning. And a lot of us do that. So if you too find yourself looking for joy or peace or security or satisfaction in some of these areas and you keep thinking, if I could just this, well, you're not alone, friend. You are in good company here. Through a lot of prayer and Bible study and quite frankly, the four-year journey that has been this YouTube channel, I have really shifted where I look for meaning. And at Christmas time, it's not in the decorate with me videos. It's not in the what are we gonna cook for Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. It's not in the cleaning videos. It's in the act of observing Advent. Now, in the past, when I was growing up, I knew what Advent was. We saw the candles at the front of the church. They would light them every Sunday in the weeks leading up to Christmas. We would do some responsive reading. I had an idea of what Advent was, but it didn't occur to me until just a few years ago that I could observe Advent just for myself and with my family here in our home. In the past, we have used this resource here, and I will give you a couple of more resources. This is a previous year's resource from the Daily Grace Company. It's a family devotional around Advent, and it's great. It takes you week by week through the different themes and it gives you activities for each day. So it will have week one, which is hope. It has seven days of activities scripture memorization, prayer. And then at the end of the week, there is an arts and crafts activity or a family activity that you would do together. And it goes on each week as you move through peace, joy, and love. And then finally has you light the Christ candle on Christmas day. This has been a very valuable resource for our family. And in observing Advent through these practices, we have developed some habits in our household around family devotions. These habits are essentially liturgy. And I talked about this last week in our video. We're going to continue to talk about this over the next few weeks. So don't be afraid of this word liturgy. Liturgy is just a fancy way to talk about the habits and practices that we observe in our worship and how we move through our days or different topics in our home. So I have been reading a book by Justin Whitmel Earley, and it is so good. I will link it in the description below. It's called Habits of the Household. You have probably seen him on Instagram. Great resource for families who are looking to have some type of structure and predictability in their home. So let's talk benefits of liturgy. So the first benefit, and this is key in the discipleship of our children, is that it gives 
words and practice to concepts that may be difficult for children to understand. So there is this sense, and Ligon Duncan has talked about this. He had a great talk at the Gospel Coalition a couple of years ago about training up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We know this verse, right? This is a very familiar concept. In discipling our children, liturgies can help to give them the structure and the form and even even the vocabulary for concepts that they may not necessarily completely understand at this point, and that's okay. The vocabulary, the meaning behind this will start to fill in as they grow and develop. So when they hear about some of these concepts, say in Sunday school or in the sermon, they already have a framework of understanding. Liturgies can provide that framework. And it doesn't get much higher abstract thinking than faith. I'm just saying it. Along those lines, family liturgies provide predictability. So in our home, mealtime liturgy looks a lot like praying, serving food, eating, having conversation, and doing a dinnertime devotional. That liturgy happens pretty much every time we sit down at our table for dinner, and it provides this predictability. In fact, when my husband has finished his dinner and he's ready to kind of pack up and leave the table, and he hasn't done the dinner time devotion, our kids will even say, Dad, wait, you haven't done the devotion. Go get the book with the bananas on it, which I absolutely love. They're remembering, they're building this habit, and it creates predictability for them. Predictability naturally leads to comfort and security. So when things are crazy and chaotic and you're traveling for the holidays and everything feels weird and, and you're missing your home and you want to sleep in your own bed, having predictable liturgies that you can take with you wherever you go can help provide comfort and security. So maybe this season you are traveling to grandma's house and it is not the most comfortable place for your child and they don't sleep well. Start developing a bedtime liturgy now where you have specific prayers that you pray or you ask them certain questions and you end the night with a sort of structure that is familiar and comfortable for them. It can go a long way in providing comfort and familiarity. And one of my favorite benefits that observing Advent as a liturgy in our home provides our memories. Just like opening the little door on the cardboard advent calendar and taking that tiny piece of disgustingly waxy chocolate out of that little space, every single day as you lead up to Christmas Day, that's bringing about nostalgia. I bet some of you are even imagining that waxy taste of the chocolate now, and it actually seems sweet. These are memories that our children are developing. Now, another example of kind of a liturgy-packed practice is something that our family will observe during Easter time. Our church hosts a Christian Passover Seder, and we have all of this ritual that goes into this meal, and our kids talk about this Seder all year long. They remember the elements of it. They recognize things in it. There's a whole section that is really geared towards the practice of communion in the Last Supper. And our kids have even noticed some of the fra some of the same phrases, the same practices every month when we are taking the Lord's Supper in our church service. So I love to see them making those connections. And they are memories year after year after year that they are building out. At this point, I hope you can tell how much I love liturgies. But the concept can feel a little overwhelming. You may even be asking yourself now, how am I going to come up with practices? I don't even know a whole lot about Advent, let alone what color candles I use and when I use them. Well, I have got you covered, friend. So like I said, this is a previous version. The Daily Grace Company has a current version of family devotionals. They do this every year, so it will be an updated devotional, and I will link that in the description below. It's going to carry you through the introduction. It's going to give you an idea of how to use the devotional, the supplies that you need, how to go through these activities, and guide you 
the whole way. If you're looking for a personal resource just for you, maybe you wanna do a devotional through the month of December, I will be using two resources from the Daily Grace Company. I have the first one here, Good News, Great Joy, and this one, which is Prayers for Advent. So I will do this in the morning. This is a Bible study style. It does have a calendar that is specific for 2023. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it has daily study for each day during Advent as you move through the weeks. You could choose to get your own Advent candle set and light those candles as you do your devotion every day. In the evening time, I am going to finish out my day with the Prayers for Advent book here. There's a verse and then a prayer prompt and then a place to actually journal those prayers. So this is, again, a good way for me to just close out my day focusing on the true meaning of Christmas. And so when my resources are tapped, I can reach for these resources to fill my cup. Oh, I forgot about this one. So this um, is another family devotional. I actually have some videos on this one. And again, I'll link it in the description below, but this is one we used. It is unwrapping the names of Jesus. It's an Advent devotional. I did use this with my kids. Now we did sort of modify this for our kids, but this is a very easy resource to use even with younger children, because again, you're giving them the framework and the vocabulary for things that they may not already understand. So that is, and it's so pretty. How pretty is that? So that is unwrapping the names of Jesus. And then the other devotion, and this is out too in digital form. You can still sign up for it, I believe. But this is from Melissa Kruger. It is The Weary, the weary World Rejoices. Say that 10 times fast. Daily Devotions for Advent. It's edited by Melissa Kruger. And there are lots and lots of Gospel Coalition writers that have contributed to this devotional. It is fantastic. They're sending out daily digital copies, I believe. I will look into that a little bit further and have, again, all the details in the description. The description is your friend in this video. And there's one more resource that I want to mention that doesn't necessarily have to do with Advent, but, and that is The Great Big Sad by Christina Fox. This resource is invaluable to me. I love this book. I love this not just for my kids, but for myself. Christina does such an excellent job with all of these books. They follow a story with Josh and Mia. I have talked about this resource before, so you can find information about it in some previous videos. But if you are grieving the loss of a loved one this season, this is a great resource for you. It goes through a few chapters in the book, so they're small bite-sized pieces, and it follows Josh and Mia as they grieve the loss, very unexpected loss of their grandmother. And I know for my kids, as soon as we start to get into some of these traditions, they remember that their grandfather's are not here with us. And although it brings us great joy to know that they are going to be celebrating Christmas in the absolute best way that they possibly can, they're at the feet of Jesus. It's really sad to not have them here. And it, it makes us really miss them during the holidays. And even my oldest son, we had quite an in-depth discussion a few days ago about whether or not Jesus is coming here for Christmas and bringing grandpa with him. So having some of these discussions around the holidays can be very difficult, especially when the Christmas music is blaring and you're in the middle of the Walmart trying to find that one thing on the list that you can't find and your child is asking you about these deep things that are just so far out of your capacity to talk about now. There are some resources available to you that you can address these issues with confidence. So each week during December, we are going to cover a different topic in our household that relates back to the theme of Advent. So next week, we will be talking about 
hope and how that relates to our household management. We're going to talk through some liturgy. We'll talk through the meaning of hope and why we're observing that during Advent. I would love for you to subscribe and be able to join us week after week as we go through these liturgies through the end of the year. Thank you so much for watching. And until I see you again, keep fighting the good fight. Okay, friends, it's family time. It's time for a story. So yes, I have had more conversations in the last week than I ever wanted to about my dad and Brian's dad and them not being here, even though this is our third Christmas without my dad, which is a little hard to believe. He's been gone two years. It was right around the end of the year. Very sudden, very unexpected and very traumatic for all of us. My father-in-law, much the same way. It was more of a drawn out process with him, but also just an immense loss for our family. So this great big sad book has been awesome for our family. I really encourage you to look into this, even if your kids are a little bit older, so they don't have to be super little kids to enjoy this book. And like I said, I have found tremendous meaning in reading through grief and loss in such a simplistic way. So even though we have had some really heavy conversations at our house, it still was a wonderful Thanksgiving. We had a great meal. We ate at our dining room table. The kids used regular like fine china and we really went all out. I lit candles at the table, y'all. It was so fun and so relaxing. We had all our favorite foods, no fuss, just a good old fashioned Thanksgiving with our little family. I hope that you too had a good Thanksgiving. And for those of you who weighed in last week, yes, I am 100% team jellied cranberry sauce. <laughs> in fact, I opened, I think four cans of the jellied cranberry sauce for just the seven of us because everybody in my family loves canberry sauce. <laughs> so thanks so much for sticking around to the end. And until I see you again, keep fighting the good fight. See, you got it twice. Good for you.